guys so welcome back to luxuries so in today's video i actually want to do um a part two of my you know ultimate guide of um unsung black authors and i actually have four that i have not read and four that i have read so i just want to kind of give you guys a variety um and especially the ones that i have not read because i really am excited about them um i do know those authors but again i just have not picked up their work so yeah let's just get started so the four that i have read first is me dying trial by patricia powell now this is actually a caribbean author uh, i know i did not say it right i'm not jamaican <laughs> but um yeah i read this book about two years ago i find that with caribbean authors there's such good storytellers just like african you know novelists started to get back into reading um i gravitated towards african literature and then after that um i picked up some caribbean authors and i realized oh they can tell a story and this is one of them you know this is a mother that has six children and she just feels like she struggles between her her personal uh life or between her marriage and it just it, this book talks about sexuality it talks about immigration it talks about marriage it you know everything that comes with life um it talks about and i really really did enjoy this book next is uh joan riley uh riley the unbelonging <sighs> This is also a Caribbean um, author. This book was so heavy. It talks about a girl that um, her mother just passed. She's lived with her father. Her father's horrible. Um, and he actually, he almost um, rapes her. And she gets out that situation and she ends up... Um, I haven't read it in a long time. I, I think she, she ends up going with another uh like couple, living with another uh family, and she's like really, really, really smart. And she goes to this predominantly white school. Of course, she's the only black person in there, and they treat her really horrible. They talk about the way she looks, her skin tone, her hair, and all of that. But she's like really, really, really smart. You basically just see how she navigates through her um like through school when she gets older she goes to college but because she's had such a struggle life um you know she, in terms of i would say her sexuality she just doesn't really know where to go where to turn she's really just a lost individual a lost young girl um and when i tell you joan she did a really good job telling this story and it it broke my heart it honestly did because it's not that you don't get closure it's just not you get closure but it's not a just a happy ending it's almost kind of like a um yeah it's just not a happy ending but it still is a really really good book next is my favorite you guys know i have to include bernice l mcfadden pray some for the butterfly this is my favorite book of all times. Um, it, again, talks about a girl named Akata that uh, lives in a fictional um, village called Yukimbi. And she goes to the shrine. A shrine is a uh, basically slavery. And she stays there for 15 years. <sighs> my heart. I adore, adore Bernice L. McFadden. She can write anything, like anything. People know her for, some people know her for Sugar. That's her debut novel, which didn't read like a debut novel. But this, I urge you guys to pick up Praise Song for the Butterflies because it is amazing. And lastly, which is another Caribbean author, uh, Jamaica Kincaid, um, Annie John. Now, I love Jamaica Kincaid. She's another uh, author that can really tell a story that grips you, holds you. Her books they um obviously they're gonna be set in uh the caribbeans mainly in jamaica i believe and with this story it's like a it's a coming of age story um you basically just see how uh the main character basically just lives life um and she's she's just trying to find herself because again it's a coming of age story uh just a young girl navigating through school through personal life and 
that's basically <laughs> what it's about. It's a very short um, novel. I noticed with Jamaica Kincaid, she writes um, short novels, but they just pack a punch. And that's the beauty of a great writer. They can write little pages, but still tell a you know well-rounded story. And she is in that category. Now, the four that I have not read. Uh, the first is Pearl Cleave. Cleage, I think that's how you say her name. She's known for a book called What Looks Like Crazy on an Ordinary Day. Now, I know she is a Southern writer. Um, if you guys know the book, um, Tari Jones, American uh, Marriage, Pearl was actually her mentor and she was her teacher and she really inspired her to write. Um, so when I saw an interview and I saw Terry Jones talk about her, I had to grab... Um, Pearl's uh, works because I, I love the way that uh, Tari Jones uh, writes. And then when I saw that interview, I've been watching interviews of uh, Pearl Cleage and I just realized I, I love her spirit. So I'm really am excited to, you know, get into her work and especially this one. Next is B.B. Moore Campbell, Brothers and Sisters. Now, B.B. Moore Campbell, I, another one I've known her, I've known her work, but I've never read um, obviously, um, she was also, um, helped Pearl, uh, uh, Cleage with her works and, you know, getting published and things of that nature. If you guys know the TV show in the nineties, um, in the house starting, uh, Kim Wayans, who else? Um, Ella Cool J and Maya, is it Mira Campbell? That's her, um, the author is her mother. Uh, so yeah but i know her writing is really really good because i read like a short story by her and it was amazing so i am again i'm excited to get into this one next is an ordinary woman uh donna hill now donna's been writing books since the late 80s she has over 17 novels and i know she's like a contemporary um author she, her main um her her main stories and uh themes are obviously about black women about relationships between you know a man and a woman uh, that's up my alley you guys know i love a good couple that's going through some drama and some tea and she she does that with her works and lastly is dorothy west uh this is the wedding dorothy west was the last living um harlem renaissance um author she died in the nine oh was it the 90s or 2000s um she was at first known for her poetry um in the harlem renaissance and then oprah winfrey did a tv movie called the wedding and it starts holly berry it starts who else lynn whitfield i've seen that movie love it she has been on my list for a while. I have another book by her, The Living Isn't Easy, that I do want to tap into um, also. But yeah, I really am excited to read uh, Dorothy West because like I said, I really did enjoy the movie of The Wedding. So I know I'm probably going to enjoy the book more. So yeah, guys, that's all I have for you. I just wanted to talk about these unsung Black authors. I am loving... Um, you guys know how much I love Black literature, and especially the unsung that I classify them as. And yeah, I'm going to continue to um, do more and continue to research and buy these Black works. And clearly, I need to read them. Um, <laughs> but you, I'm a collector. So you guys know I'm going to collect these books like I ain't got no sense. So yeah, that's all I have for you guys. And I'll be back with more Black books. Bye.